So when I begin the process of looking for what I hope will become the best possible firewood that I can produce for restaurants, brick ovens, uh, people who want very, very clean, very well seasoned, pretty firewood that they can display in their restaurant, they can have around customers, that customers feel comfortable enough to be eating around and be in the same building as, you know, people who are, are dressed up very nice, they can come into a restaurant and they want to see the most beautiful firewood that they can displayed and being used in the process of cooking. So I, when I started to sell to uh, brick ovens and restaurants that want the finest quality firewood, I had to seriously up my game when I was looking for firewood. So first of all, as kind of a, a, a general rule that I make myself abide by, there are a lot of caveats, which I'll go over in a second, but I don't cut down healthy, green, live trees. I just don't do it. You know, an oak takes way too long to grow and to become this massive, giant, sturdy tree. I, I just don't see the point in cutting down um, a good healthy oak tree or any tree for that matter uh, for firewood something that you're just going to burn so the only caveats to that are if i'm doing a timber stand improvement project where i need to take out um, younger deformed um, less healthy and less vigorous trees so that the trees that they're next to can grow up to be even more healthy and they can be kind of uh, unlocked to you know, grow to their full potential and make great trees. So what I start to do when I look around the woods for the best firewood is I'll start to look at uh, dead trees, trees that have um, died recently and are still standing. Lightning struck trees, trees that have been struck by lightning, the tops are out and they have died because of that. The perfect scenario is something like this tree behind me. So this tree was indeed struck by lightning. Roughly 30 foot up in the air, this tree was super straight, very nice tree, beautiful red oak, but it was struck and that entire top came down. And so you'll see the top behind me. As you can see, there's still leaves attached. So this hasn't been laying on the forest floor very long. Once a tree makes contact with the ground, it immediately starts to rot very fast. You have that moisture from the ground, you have, you have insects able to access that, termites, ants, um, all these different insects and, and bacteria start to uh, take over. The fungus um, starts to uh, grab a hold and that tree is going through the process of rotting, breaking down, and it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's naturally going back to the forest floor. It's giving its nutrients back to the forest floor. And a lot of trees that I find um, it's too late. They've already begun that process and that's okay. That makes a nice healthy ecosystem for a lot of different insects, funguses. You know, break that tree down, make it as a home for a while and it just goes through the process, goes back to the earth. No big deal. Very good for the environment. Um, but a tree like this that I can catch very early, still got its leaves on it. This tree just fell around October time frame. So it's been on the ground roughly four or five months, something like that. Maybe the uh, bottom layer of the bark has started to get wet, moist, and started to decay a little bit. But for the most part, when I cut through this tree earlier, it was a very good, solid red oak. No rot has started. Um, still fairly uh, green and wet inside. Um, but this tree will have to be taken down. It's, it's no longer um, gonna be a very good tree. If it does stay alive, the, the other part does stay alive, um, this tree that's on the ground is is detached and it's going to rot, um, but the, there is still some standing uh, tree left, but it is not going to make a very good tree. It's lost a lot of its potential, um, so the health of that tree is going to seriously diminish, especially since the uh, very top, it snapped completely off, so completely susceptible to all the rain and the snow, so it's going to get in down in there and it's going to eventually rot. And so I'll be taking that part down as well. That'll be sawn into logs, and we'll be splitting that, and we'll be going through the entire process of how I make um, the best firewood that I can possibly make that can go into these brick ovens. And it's very clean burning, very dry, very seasoned, as close to perfect as I can make. So 
So when you're trying to make beautiful firewood, you want to make sure that everything is uh, in good proportions. You know, it looks good, it looks uniform, and so when you do that, you want everything to be pretty much the same size. Um, so length, uh, what my restaurants want, they want 16 inches in length. So I will actually make a tape measure and I'll get a piece of two by four or something like that and I'll cut it about 16 inches or I'll mark it 16 inches. And so I will make my marks before I cut. So everything's measured out at 16 inch intervals. Now it doesn't matter if it's an inch one way or another, but for the most part, I want these to be as near as 16 inches as I can possibly get them. The same thing goes uh, when I split the firewood. Now I kind of have a pretty good idea of what sizes I want. I want them to be you know, easy to manage, so I want them to be uh, pretty small. But I do actually have a circle, and just as a check, every few logs or so, or if it's kind of close, maybe I'm thinking about splitting it again. I'll put the stick of wood up against that circle, and I will make sure that it'll be able to go through that circle and that it's small enough to fit through that circle. And so, so that gives me, you know, an idea of, of how big they need to be. Usually these ovens are being lit every single day. So if you have a lot of big logs and not a lot of uh, tinder to get it started, you may have trouble lighting it. So if all the logs are, are fairly small, they get seasoned very well when they're cut that small or split that small as well. So they're a lot easier to start and a lot easier to light. <laughs>
once this oak is stacked, it'll sit there for about a year until it's dry and seasoned. And then we take it to the, uh, the restaurant. They can stack this in their brick oven and it can make some of the most amazing meals that you could think of. But uh, this is the uh, work and preparation in trying to make the best firewood that I can possibly make for my restaurant that I deliver to.